God tonight. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord God Almighty. He is here tonight. Oh my God, and we just want to give our focus on the true and living God tonight. If it wasn't for Him, oh my God, we would not have been here.
stand for one more time. And if we could just acknowledge God with our hands lifted. I know some of you may not fully understand, but I pray that after tonight, you will get the revelation, the understanding, oh my God, of the power that lies in our heavenly Father. path. 
I really didn't have to choose this part because my father, my dad, was a. I wonder if I should say this now, boy, because I'm alone here. <laughs> my dad was a big shot time, big time. They used to call him Ghost, they used to call him Santi. They just used to know him by name, but not by face. And he was a big boss in Maraval. Say anything big. And his lifestyle was guns, ammunition, all the weed, all the everything. And you know, he left my life when I was three years old. But before that, all, 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 all what I'm saying here, of course, my mom would have told me. But before that, they said that they used to call me Young Santi. <laughs> because his name was Santi. So they used to call me Young Santi. But my mother said, mm -mm. no, 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 no. No, no, no. They don't call him my son Young Santi at all. Because she wanted to make sure that the direction and my future is to go where Jesus Christ wants me. And not where this world that we are confined to wants me. So she decided to name me. Nickel and my alias at that time would have been Stuart Little. Because <laughs> I was very really small. Stuart Little. But she always used to say I would have been a strong, strong youth man serving Jesus Christ. Thank God that I have a mother that was able to push me in that direction. Now the thing about it is, the Bible says, by the fruit you will tell. And I must say, and I will say it in Big and Maloney. Jesus Christ's fruit is the best fruit you can ever taste. Because listen, Amen. when you taste that fruit and you keep on that path, it has nothing that can stop you. No obstacle, no demon, no Satan, no person, no nothing can stop you. Because you're serving under who? You're serving under who? Alright. So as I go along in life, and I didn't accept the guns and the ammunition. I started to find myself when it comes to being a musician. I love the drums. I really love the drums. That, that's my thing. So I, God allowed me to continue to grow as a drummer. And then I became half minister. Then I do a little bit of preaching here and there. Of course, you know, every church that I went, I keep myself in that, in that place. Now I'll tell you something, and this for all the young people. You see, the crowd that you're around, a lot of people will say, I can lie with this person, but I don't have to follow that person. Don't help. Listen, the Bible says, do not let your heart deceive you at all. And I come to tell you tonight that I need all the young people, whoever you are lying around, if it goes against anything that is legal, I want to say illegal, when I say illegal, it could be in the physical or the spiritual. In terms of physical weed, smoking, drinking, liming, partying, it worth nothing. And on the spiritual side, it could be building wrong altars, serving things that you're not supposed to serve, indulging yourself in things that you're not supposed to indulge yourself in. Because it could mess you up eternally all right so i need for the young people when you're following jesus so let me ask a question if you want to get rich now you are poor huh, but you want to get rich what are the friends that you will lie wrong rich people or poor people rich people simple as that so if you want to live life clean and live life for the lord then you will walk with people who believe in God or who don't believe in Jesus Christ. Who you will walk with? Alright. Who believe in Jesus Christ. So I need you all as much as you can to follow in the footsteps of people who believe in Jesus Christ so that it will strengthen you because the Bible says iron sharpens iron. And in my story, as you can see I am here today drumming for the Lord worshiping for the Lord and I'm doing a good job because I'm married four years now four years now beautiful wife I have four children yeah 
Yeah, I'll fuck. I'll fuck to it. But we all under the terrain of Jesus Christ. And I have to say, I thank God for giving me the ability to serve Him and follow in His footsteps. And I just want to impart onto every young person that all the dreams that you have, you can find it. All the things that you have to do, you can do it. But I want to let you know, and I need you to keep it here in your head, that the only, the best way, because there are plenty of other ways on them, but the best way to live life and to continue your life, reach into the place that you want to reach, is through Jesus Christ. Alright? So I just want to leave you all with that and continue to be a blessing to yourself, to others, and remember the principles of Jesus Christ. This is my testimony. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is faithful. You see, I told you all, God is a sustainer. He's able to keep, even if you grow up in church, if you are small and you're still in church, God is able to keep. And as the brother said, the Bible says that evil communication corrupts good manner, good corrupts good manners. So it matters who your company are. Okay, and I also want to say tonight, you know, he spoke about a mother. It's good to have praying mothers. So all the mothers in the midst of us, I want to encourage you. Pray and speak over your children. Because words have power. And because you are the authority figure in both mother and father, as you are the authority figure in the children's life, you have the ability to speak things and see it come to pass. Amen? At this time, we're going to bring on a young man who loved the Lord, loved his wife, which is very important as a minister of God, love his children, and love witnessing for Jesus. And he's coming all the way from Mova to Maloney to tell you about the goodness of God and to give you an invitation for salvation. So put your hands together to welcome Minister Griffith as he comes to bring the word of Almighty God. Come on, we can be better than that. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. That Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God is a good God. Amen. 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 Well, I want to say I thank God for all of you coming out here this evening. For giving us a time out of your busy schedules. And I want to assure you that you will not be disappointed. I want to thank all of you who came all the way from Mova, Lavantil, Wells. Arima, Shogonas, just now, just now. Everyone here who is living about five minutes away from here, or let's just wave your hand. If you're living about five minutes away. All right. Five minutes away. Five minutes, wow, wonderful. If you're living about ten minutes away or more, wave your hand. More than 10 minutes. More, more than 15 minutes. Who think they came from the furthest here? Let me see. Who came from the furthest? Who? Who? These two? Who is it? You, you, you cheering for them. Let me hear. Where came from? Sandy Grande. Oh, good. Anybody can be that? Who's that? Marabella in the house. Manzanella on, on the heavy eye. When I look at a map, I see Marbella and Manzanella two inches away. I don't know how far I is. <laughs> About two, three inches. So you tell me, which point is the furthest? Marbella. is the furthest? Manzanella. Man, somebody need to put up a map, eh? Manzanella. I don't want to get the wrong person something tonight. <laughs> From here, all you make sure I get my prayer because all you tell the truth, eh? Let me hear. Who is the furthest? Who is the 
when Jesus rose from the dead and he spoke with the men who were on the road to Emmaus, when he disappeared from them, Father, they said, did not our hearts burn within us when he opened the scriptures to us? So, Father, I pray that as your word is open today, let the hearts of the people burn in the name of Jesus. Let their heart burn in the name of Jesus with your word. In the name of Jesus. He said, Lord, Thank you, Lord, for doing it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you that Maloney is changed from today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that Maloney is changed. Hallelujah. Colonial yes. Hallelujah. 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 Young man, I don't know who you are, but I can tell you that God has a wonderful plan for your life. That if from this moment on you always choose the right friend, will never lead you into failure. Hear me? God has a purpose for you. Give him your all. Amen? Come on, just keep worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Keep worshiping the Lord. You may have your seats. I want to share with you from the word of God. Hallelujah. You'll just have to take off the popcorn machine for a little while until we finish. Hallelujah. Well, after this, right? I don't have any other stuff to after this one. I want to read to you a passage of scripture taken from the book of Acts chapter 3. Now hear me everyone. I would like to have your undivided attention for a short moment. Acts chapter 3. Reading from verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom he had laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called Beautiful. It went on to say, he was laid at the gate of the temple which is called Beautiful to ask for arms from those who entered the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for arms. And fixing his eyes on him with John and Peter said, look at us. I want somebody to repeat this after me. Say, look at us. Look at us. And fixing his eyes on Peter and John, he said, look at us. And he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now, young man, please, behind there, let's talk to them. Let's let them have a seat. And seeing, and he leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking with them. Walking and leaping and praising God. Let me tell you this. If some of you will just take a hold of what will be said and done here tonight. 
Just as this lame man, when he had an encounter with Jesus, he left so transformed. The Bible says that he left walking and leaping and praising God. I am telling you. If you take a hold of what Christ has done for you, you will be walking and leaping and praising God the same way. And the Bible says, So he, leaping up, stood up and walked into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want to share with you about God's power to touch and transform you. The Bible says, guys, this, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Finish. I want to go back to verse 1. It says, now when Peter and John had went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. A certain man lame from his mother's womb. Anybody know someone who was born with something? They were born with something that it was not right. When they go to the doctor, to the hospital, they say this child was born with this heart problem. They were born with some disease, some ailment, some sickness. And then the doctor look and tell you that we can't do anything about it. Anybody know someone in, in that kind of situation? They were born crippled, born deaf, born dumb, born blind, born with some sort of situation. But whatever you were born with, it doesn't matter how long you have it. Just one encounter with Jesus and it transforms and takes away all situations and problems. Just one. And so the Bible says that this man, he was in a situation, the Bible says he was born that way. And I know many people seem to want to come out of the closet these days and they say, I was born that way. Some believe that they were born a man as a woman. And some believe they were born a woman as a man. And so we are living in a confused generation where people can't even seemingly tell how they were born as though God made a mistake. When he created them. But I want every one of you to know. That no matter how you were born. What family you were born in. What community you were born in. You were born with a plan and a purpose. And God didn't make a mistake. Amen. God still has a wonderful plan for you. And I know many people when they are growing up. They say Father God. How could you allow me to be born into this situation. How could you allow me to be born into this family. How could you allow me to be born with this ailment, this problem, this sickness, this disease? God never made a mistake. And just so you were born, there is a God who is able to solve your problem. So this man, the Bible says that he was born that way. The Bible says that he was lame from his mother's womb. Do you know what that means? It means from the, the moment he was born, he had a problem. There are so many people that think that from the moment they were born, they had a problem. You know, I now see my grandmother there. <laughs> Somebody put their hands together for my grandmother. I don't know where she comes from. I love her. There are many people who were born with a problem. But the Bible says that now this man, he was 38 to 40 years with a problem. And I know many people think that they are going through things for a very long time and you are asking yourself, when will it end? I come with the answer for you tonight to tell you when your problem will end. Many people, they are facing suffering, depression, sorrow, sickness, disease, and they are asking this question, when, when, oh God, when? I don't know if anybody ever prayed that prayer. Oh God, when? When will this when will this man stop abuse me? When will my mother stop beat me? When? Oh God, when? I just can't wait till I reach old enough to come out of this house. I can't wait till I reach at the moment where I'm able to do my own thing. Oh God, when? Somebody say when. And I know many people who 
question. When? Oh God, when? Tell me when. Anybody ask, ever ask God that question before? You are fed up of how your life is going. You are fed up of the inconsistencies. It's as though you try to go up and the wind of life seems to blow you back down. When, Lord, when? And I can imagine this man, the Bible says, every day they will bring this man and put him outside the gate called beautiful. It's as though they lift him up and put him outside the church because you know religious people like to look good, right? So while they were going into the temple, they will give him a little money just to make themselves look good and feel good. They will give him a little money over and over and that was the best place to beg. Have you ever met a beggar outside of a bank? Why do you think they're begging outside the bank? As soon as you do your little withdrawal, give me something now. I have a problem giving able-bodied men money. You get that one? They could go and walk, right? I asked a man the other day, I know come on the ATM, right? A man come up to me and I say, hey, give me something now, give me something now. So I asked him, man, I do so, I, I started dipping. Eh? When I started dipping, I said say to myself, but you giving a strong young man money. So I said, and I asked him, I said, but why you don't go and get work? He said, boy, I can't work. Boy. I said, what do you mean I can't work? He said, boy, if I start to work, they will stop my public assistance. And that is how the system of this world is designed in such a way to keep people in a bondage in their mind and in their spirit. Keep you dependent on the government. Now this man, he was 38 years facing this problem. Somebody said 38 years. I'm quite certain that that is much longer than how much years some of you are going through problems. 38 years, every day they're putting this man to beg. Let me tell you this. God did not create you to beg. God did not create you to have to be dependent on people for handout. God did not create you to be looking, scunting for money, picking up bottles, trying to do things. No, no, no. God created you for better than that. The Bible says that when God created Adam, everything that Adam needed for survival, it was already there. All Adam had to do was maintain a relationship with the one who created him, and he never had a problem. So man's biggest problem is not God's inability to provide, you know. It's their connection with the God who created them, so that they will know that God loves me so much that whatever I need, he will give it to me. And I want to announce to everyone under the sound of my voice, that the God that we speak to you about, he is much more than able to meet your need. He's a God of yesterday, today, and forever. He can do supernatural abundance above you can ask or think. You don't have to reach to the point where you have to beg. But this was this man's situation. 38 years begging. And in one moment, somebody say one moment. All of a sudden, I'm telling you, some of you, you are crossing paths with destiny tonight. After many years of begging, he happened to beg the right person. But the person he was begging didn't have anything to give him. So the Bible says that Peter and John, they were going into the temple at the ninth hour of prayer. You see, there is something about the power of prayer. That when you begin to pray, when the day comes, I don't know who you are, but I'm really speaking to you, right? They're just hearing me. When you begin to pray, when the day comes, God will allow you to cross paths with the right people. And the Bible says that as they were on their way to pray, they happened to have an encounter with this man who was there for almost 38 years. And when he begged Peter and John, he looked at them expecting to receive. And that is what makes the whole difference. It's your expectation to receive something from God will determine how you live here tonight. All that you will experience here tonight is not all that God can do. It's what you expect him to do. That is what he will do, my friend. God is, not, God is only limited according to your faith. So this man looked at Peter and 
John. And he said to them, give me some money. Let me tell you folks, there is something better than money in this world. He was looking for money. He was begging. And then all of a sudden, Peter and John said to this man, they said, silver and gold we do not have. But such that we have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Amen. Now here is the thing. After 38 years of struggle, one encounter with the name of Jesus, God didn't even need 38 minutes to fix his whole life problem. I want to announce to everyone in Maloney, hear me young people, try just to keep them calm up there. All the problems the devil has done in your life, all the situation, all the sickness, all the burdens, all the suffering, whatever the enemy would have done to you for five years, ten years, fifteen years, thirty years, God don't need thirty minutes to change it. Amen. I am telling you, if you come to Jesus, he can solve family problems like that. If you come to Jesus, he can take away sickness and disease like that. And this world system is designed in such a way to keep people sick, to keep people broke, to keep people bound. So when you go by the doctor, they say, hey, you, you ever walk in long? And he shoot and they say, free eye test, free eye test, free eye test. Will you ever, go, will you ever see them? What percentage of people they think that test their eyes? They say, need glasses. Let me tell you this. The system in this world is so corrupt. It is meant to keep people hooked on drugs. Hooked on all sorts of pills, synthetic drugs. All of a sudden, why do you think that they passed a law that people can now smoke weed? Because you know why? They want our young people walking around as though they're dumb, they're dead. Just out of your minds. Can't think for yourself. And so many people think that that is liberating. We can do what we want. We can now smoke a little weed. But one thing that those in power know that is hard to control an educated public. So they try to deliberately dumb down the next generation of young people. Making so many of you feel as though it's so good. We can live what we want, smoke what we want, drink what we want, and just enjoy life. But it's an agenda by those in power to keep the next generation down. Yeah. But I want to tell you that it might have been starting in your life, but tonight it ends in Jesus' name. Yeah. You see, that is why when we come and we preach and we speak the truth, we have to tell you about the problems that are taking place right next to you. It's knocking on your door. Yes. So when it is, you know, go to the hospital and they prescribe a drug for you to tell you you have to stay on that for 10 years, 15 years, and then suddenly drug you so what is the solution? If the, if the medical system is corrupt, if the police system is corrupt, if it is the, the legal system is corrupt, what is a way? Where do our justice come from? How can we live a healthy life? How can we live a life not depending on begging everything you had to sign up for and you had to go, into, go to the government and you're begging, begging hand out? No, God didn't create you for that. There is a better life, my friend. Amen. There is a better life. Yeah. And it's only found in Jesus Christ. And that is the very purpose why Christ came. So that nobody went holy by the throat and make you feel as though without them you can't, you can't survive in life and without them you can't prosper and without them you can't go forward but the devil is a liar in the name of Jesus I say you will rise up you will go forward and you will fulfill the plan and purpose that God has created you for nobody in this world can keep you down my friend as long as you and God make connection there is nothing that they can do no law they can pass in government there is nothing the WHO, the CDC, the World Economic Forum can do to stop God from blessing you. Yes, hallelujah. God wants you to have a good life. Yes. So the Bible says that this man was in this situation for 38 years. And just one encounter with the name of Jesus. I want you to know that there is power in the name of Jesus. To heal all manner of sickness and disease. Whatever you would have been born with, if you come to Jesus tonight, he can take it all away at once. In 
the name of Jesus. Whatever sickness you have in your body, Jesus is able to more than take it away. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 8. In the book of Luke, chapter 8, reading from verse 1, it says, And when he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came to him on worship and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. I want you to know tonight that Jesus is always willing to give you a better life. Yeah. He said, come unto me, all who labor and of heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. God didn't send Jesus to put a weight on your shoulders to beat you down and keep you down in life, my friend. Jesus came to give you a better life. It is not in, in the games. It is not in jobs. It is not in, in the movies. It is not in the pornography. I tried all of that and still was dissatisfied. It's only in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that the leper came to him and worshipped and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hands and touched him and said, I am willing to be cleansed. And immediately, say immediately. <laughs> Jesus don't need years to fix your problem, my friend. If you would come to him tonight, he can do it how? <laughs> say that word again. <laughs> he wants to fix your life problem tonight. But you have to come to him. There is nobody who came to Jesus and their life was not changed. Tonight is your night for your life to be changed. Amen? I want everyone to stand to your feet with me. This man, he was facing this situation for 38 years. And one encounter with Jesus, his life was completely changed. I'm telling you, Jesus is calling you tonight. Boy, your heads, close your eyes with me. Jesus is calling you tonight and he is saying, come. 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 Tonight is your night, Maloney. Jesus is calling you. He didn't come to give you a better life. Jesus came to give you a brand new one. Amen. And that is why the Bible says that Jesus took the sin of the whole world upon him. The punishment that you should have received for the wrong things that you did, Jesus took all of it. Not some of it, not most of it, Jesus took all of it. And he did not leave anything undone. That is why on the cross of Calvary he could have said, it is finished. And the good work that he would have started, I'm telling you, he will complete it. In the name of Jesus. So tonight the Lord is calling you and he is clearly speaking to your heart. Jesus wants to give you a brand new life. Hallelujah. Bow your heads, close your eyes with me everyone. We are wrapping up tonight. In the name of Jesus. This is strange. Now here is it. Based on what I preach to you tonight, it's as though I feel as though I'm just gonna skip the altar call. I don't know, I don't know why. Yes. I know I'm feeling from the Lord. Every one of you who need prayer, you just want us to pray with you, leave where you are and come. You just need prayer, come. Yes. Come, no matter what it is. Leave where you are and come. Can I get Jesus name. Hallelujah. You need prayer, come. If you need prayer, come. Go ahead, go down here. If you need, if you have a problem in your body and you are sick, come. Go ahead, close your eyes. Is there 
anyone else you need prayer come I'm telling you from tonight your life is going to change Hallelujah. Keep your hands for your eyes closed. God is going to do a brand new thing in your life. I want to do some tea and for Christ. Come stand behind me. God is creating for a life of pain and struggle, my friend. God wants to set you free of whatever the devil has been playing in your life with. Keep your hands bow, your eyes closed. Concentrate on people. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus.